Nelson and Joe Hour. So I'm I'm hosting this week the best of Uncensored Net Noise. Uh, just recently, the guys got to interview Travis Meeks from Days of Anew, and he's such a Looney Tunes shitbag retard that he was actually on the show Intervention. He must be a mess. He's bipolar, and everything he talks about is colors and trees. What a weirdo. Listen to this dude. Check him out. All right, we got Travis Meeks on the line right now. What's going on, Travis? Hey, man. Hey, man. How are you? Oh, we're doing good, man. How are you doing? This is amazing, man. We've been trying to do this for like three weeks, and we finally have delivered. Yeah, we finally got it, uh, got everything together, and uh, it's great to have you on the show, dude. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad and uh, honored to be on your show. Now I got a couple. Um, I got a couple. I got. I got. A couple, I'm gonna start off with a couple questions I got for you, real quick, I, before we. Yeah, I, me too. Uh, you shoot first. All right. I, a few questions I got for you. What, what's, what's going on with uh, Days of New right now? I mean, uh, you got uh, uh, a lot of stuff in the works. I've been hearing, and uh, what's going on? Well, um, I've been touring for two years. Um, I've had to kind of, uh, in so many words. Um, I guess make amends and redeem myself uh, for a lot of my behaviors um, in the past um, from shows and uh, tours that had been canceled. Not all my fault, but you know all the fingers have been pointed towards me. The days of the new career from '96 to uh, I guess about 2002 uh, was dramatic. Um, because I was I was surrounded by people who, for one, uh, did not realize that I was autistic. And uh, when you're dealing with autism, you're dealing with a specific focus. And my specific focus was the tree, the colors, the the world that the music takes you to, um, instrumentation, philosophy, God, consciousness, spirituality. Everything that has to do with something that's just magical. And uh, my soul is completely devoted to that. And if if someone was to ask me to become a warrior to fight for that, like by God's side or consciousness, I, I, I'm trying to use words that doesn't offend people because God seems to be like a cuss word today because of the abuse of uh, hypocrisy with Christianity and other religions. But... Uh, you know, um, our uh, consciousness, the universe, uh, the force, Star Wars, we could use that as an example. I would die for uh, what I believe in. And that's the kind of artist that you're dealing with. And uh, that's a real thing today. You know, um, I have no means to uh, make hits. I have no means to impress anyone. I, uh, I love you but I don't care what you think about me. Um, although, from time to time, I do have my insecurities, and I do want you to like me. But not everybody's going to like me, and not everybody's going to understand me, especially with autism, because uh, it seem, I seem to a lot of people to be standoffish. And when I'm in environments that, I, I, uh, that uh, give me panic attacks, I... Uh, I freeze and uh, I rage, and this has been going on since I was eight years old. Um, but what's going on with Days of the New right now is I'm working on my fourth release. And I'm working and in the process of starting a record label called Days of the New Productions. I will be um, representing myself still as Days of the New, but as Days of the New presents Tree Colors. Tree Colors is the new project under the record company Days of the New. Days of the New is the record company that will still be on the album cover. This has never been done before, so it's, uh, it may be hard to understand. Led Zeppelin should have did it years ago, and maybe the Beatles should have did it. But this is my way of owning my music and doing what I love and having no one tell me how to express myself and that's what makes me angry is that when I see too many people who become clones and who give away their love and heart to conformity and lies I refuse to do so 
That is the person that you were talking to on the phone today. Now, let me ask you a little bit of uh, another little question here, though. I mean, I, that was one of my questions. I wanted to find out a little bit about the why you named uh, your albums, you know, after colors and stuff like that. And that's one of the one of the questions. I, you already answered it for me, though. But can you go into it a little bit deeper and tell the, the our listening audience why you you know went about that? I mean, why did why did you go for colors instead of something different? Well, the best way I can describe it is uh, I associate colors with sound. I see what I write. Uh, this has been described um, in history uh, as uh, true composers and true, uh, you know, like heartfelt composers that like this magic just comes out of them. They're just like musically like crazy. Um, they see what they write. It's kind of like writing music to a movie. But I refuse to become a Danny Elfman because I believe that the best musicians are scared to face you know, the masses, and we are being starved of good music. Um, although we do have a race of rebellion who, even if they hear good music and it touches them, they're going to turn it off because they're afraid to feel good, and they hang on to this hatred. And I understand that because I used to, I'm, I'm a big Pantera fan. I used to be the biggest old Metallica fan, Prong, Sepultura. I still respect them all. I was the biggest metal hater in the world, and anything that like may have been like I hated the grunge scene. I could not stand the grunge scene. That may be that may surprise you because some people consider Days of the New grunge. No, Days of the New is acoustical madness. Days of the New was the best guitar band out of all of the grunge scene. You will not get that picking anywhere. Now. We can change the language and say, okay, let's let's not look at it like best. Let's just look at it as like, uh, you know, melody and uh, notation and complexity. Days of the New is the most complex out of any Alice in Chains, Nirvana, Soundgarden, Stone Temple Pilots, Candlebox, you name it. Creed, Days of the New, with just the acoustic guitar, the picking alone. And... Uh, that's what continues to grow. Now, um, my voice has changed. Um, you know, when I was 16 years old, you know, I was, let it go. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just singing. I was expressing what I felt. Um, a lot of the album was written about my tragedies of um, the system of being uh, in special education, being misdiagnosed, uh, wanting from the police all the time. I was banned from Indiana, almost went to boys' school, had a child that was taken away from me. That record was real, and that record blew up. And uh, I was trying to bring, you know, a lot of people along with me because, you know, I was a scared, fragile kid, mm -hmm. you know, who who wasn't as animated as I am today. I'm expressive, and I'm very willing to whip my penis out if that will do the world justice, you know. Travis, um, I was Travis. I was reading an article in Rolling Stones but, magazine. I don't think it will do the world justice, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Travis. What I'm saying is, is I, I'm not afraid to be naked. I'm not afraid to carry the cross. Yeah. You know, I've reached a place of humility that um, um, from my experiences as from a child through my career of being signed at 16, of playing uh, the music that I've created, played, of the influences that I've been influenced by, from Danny Elfman to Basil Polyduris, composer of Conan and the Barbarian soundtracks, um, Philip Glass, Dead Can Dance, um, uh, and, uh, The Doors, you know, a lot of the, uh, you know, carnival, orchestrated, open-minded, non-genre music. You know, uh, it doesn't get you in a click where you don't find the goth people sitting in one corner and the emo in one corner and the heavy metal people in one corner and then, you know, the rock fans in another corner. You know, I, that shit makes me sick. Well, I was reading an article here in the Rolling Stones back in 1998. The, the headline says, Travis Meeks turns Days of the New into a soap opera. And I was wondering what your take was that, your take on that is. Well, let me ask you your opinion. What is a soap opera? Well, a soap opera is just like a drawn-out thing with, uh, you know, basis, you know, where there's always bickering and fighting, or there's, uh, there's, 
the same old thing over and over and over again. That that it's a never-ending story, basically, with no point to it. That's what a soap opera is. Um. Well. My take on that is is that they don't know that I have Asperger's syndrome and that I'm eccentric and that the only thing that I'm good at doing, I couldn't work a regular job, not because I'm a rock star, and I don't like being called a rock star. I'd actually take offense to that. If you call me a rock star, um, I'll probably disengage a conversation with you. Um, I think the rock star is extinct. Um, I, think they're, I think that rock stars are fake. I think that they're just out to get attention because mommy and daddy didn't give it to them right. Um, that's not the case with me. But to answer your question, um, I am eccentric, and the people that surrounded me did not appreciate nor understand that or respect that. And when you disrespect someone, what happens? You basically, get your uh, get your feelings hurt. It's basically what's going to happen to you. What happens is you get drama when you have misunderstanding. You know, I, I, I worked with people and record labels that had ideas and goals in mind. Days of the New had the capacity to uh, be as large as Creed. You know, we had three number one hit singles that hit fast. We had the capacity to be as large as Creed. I did not want that. But I will tell you, I'm not afraid of success. I have a career today. I still own my art. I have people who cry to me, uh, who, who tell me that if it wasn't for my music, they couldn't have spiritually grown. Well, that's some of the comments we have I mean, here. Scott Stapp is sitting in his mother's basement with billions or millions of dollars with, with doing nothing. I have something inside of me that I own. Okay, I held on to my integrity. And no one in the world could ever understand that. Through my drug addictions, I mean, through the pain, everything that I've been through, I'm not a victim to the way I feel. I make my choices, you know. But my heart does come first, and my brain processes that information, you know. Um, and sometimes, you know, uh, sometimes I make mistakes. Sometimes I do things that I wouldn't think I would do, you know. Uh, I got pulled over the other day by a police officer, and I was so surprised that I was so cool with him. Because usually, when I get pulled over by a police officer, I'm like, I get so panicky and aggravated because I've been abused by the police my entire life. I've been beaten down, um, hog-tied, and uh, thrown in jail, and then someone will come in and go, you're dealing with a mental patient. This guy doesn't belong in jail. He belongs in a mental institution. And then I would get sent to a mental institution. You know, um, I've been dealing with that my whole life. Right. You know, um, and uh, that's just the way it is. You know, I'm, I see things differently. I'm not a conformist. You know, uh, you can call me a liberalist. I don't care. I mean, whatever. I'm an expressionist. I am. I mean, that's what Jesus said. You know, I'm not into. I'm not into Jesus Christ because of Christianity. I mean, the Jesus Christ because of the fact that he said, you know what, kill me. But you ain't going to stop me from loving. And I love that factor. And before he existed and walked the planet, nobody knew nothing of that. Nobody ever had known anything that like that. No one knew that kind of sacrifice, that someone would take that kind of abuse no matter what. He made that choice. And I'm not a Christian. I can't stand Christians. Why is that, you know, Travis? I'm not racial either. But um, I just can't stand the hypocrisy in Christians. Now, I'm not saying there's not good Christians, but I'm not a religious person, and I believe that um, spirituality has left, it, left religion. I believe it's now in the people's hands. And I believe that's, what, that, that's where we're at now in the year 2000 and the days and facing a black man being a president and uh we're in some very controversial times and a lot of the things i'm saying is controversial and i guarantee you and i promise you you're going to hear a lot more from it and if i get shot over it i don't care oh wow i mean that's what you're dealing with i mean that's the kind of person I, you know i'm controversial some people might want not want to talk to me you know 
Well, we decided we wanted to talk to you, Travis. We wanted to find out a little bit more about you. But we have a comment that uh, was uh, posted up on our website, and they, I think it's a pretty good comment. Uh, Augie, what is it? Yeah, Travis, uh, what's up, dude? This is Augie. Um, I'm going to step away from the assassination for a second. Uh, this one comes from Kyle Corsair in the chat room. He says, uh, his question res- uh, regards the upcoming album. In purple, will you be continuing to explore the worldly sound of your green album? Although I love all of your albums, I definitely find green to be the most inspiring. I'm a musician myself, and this album changed the way that I hear and write music. I listen to it every day. Thanks, and good luck. I will say this. Uh, what I got from what you're saying, uh, 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 um, the Green Album. The Green Album, yes, that was a place in my life where I expressed myself um, to the fullest. I took, you know, uh, I didn't allow anybody to uh, interrupt my uh, flow with the force of nature and the universe. Um, uh, and uh, the next record that you will hear will be by far um, the most um, classical, theatrical, poetic, philosophical, controversial um, World War III a battle of self based multi instrumental, um, very Euro street band. Operatic. Um, it will be. It, it is a. It is a concept album. Um, it's like I'll write like three songs and they're all one song, but I I them in three different songs. It is a continuum, but the sound is much like. Um, the best way I can describe it is uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Wow. You know, it's very dark. You know, it's love on the da 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 da. You know, it's very strong and dark. Yet it has some of the uh, Middle Eastern and Celtic influences in it, but they're uh, not as used as much as the uh, minor classical approach um, with cello, uh, hammer dulcimer. I'm also using koto. Um, the acoustic guitar sound is the fattest that it has ever been on any record. It is better by far than the first record. The first record sounds like it's pingy. This record is like chunky. It's like it replaces the bass. I've actually had to find out how to change the bass tone to where you can actually hear the bass. And I found out that hollow, I mean, I know you might not understand this, but I've had to change the bass instruments to uh, complement the acoustic because it's so bassy and it's so loud. The acoustic guitar is so much in your face and it's so composition. You can hear every single note. That's awesome. What, um, what, what type of acoustic? The vocals uh, are very choir-like, very... Uh, I mean, I guess you could uh, say it's kind of, uh, if he was to compare it to uh, any mainstream act, System of the Down, but it's ten times more System of the Down than System of the Down. I think System of the Down plays with elements of what I'm doing. What I'm doing is writing a movie soundtrack to a movie that doesn't exist. What kind of, what, what kind of movie is this, though, Travis? So what, are you trying to, what are you going to be doing? It's a movie of the mind. It's called Days of the New Presents Tree Colors, and you can imagine whatever you want. When you when, imagine this, Dark Side of the Moon, it's like a movie. You listen to the entire record, you go into the movie. That's the kind of record that I'm writing. That's awesome. No, uh, That's the kind of music I make. That's the kind of autism that I own. I believe what I write to society is delusional. I have a quick question here. You're talking about your acoustic and the type of sounds you get off of. What type of acoustic guitars are you um, currently using to get that deep sound? I use Taylor guitars exclusively. Okay. And uh, I have another question for you, too. Um, there, Tell me a little bit about uh, your first band that you were in, uh, Dead Reckoning. What was that all about, though? It's a little bit like Pantera yeah, and everything? De- Dead Reckoning was my attempt to uh, express my rage and anger as a... Uh, I mean, I was going, it was one, It was like the direction of where metal is today, you know. I mean, I was, I was just going to be another Philip and Selmo clone, you know. Um, but what happened was, was uh, about 15, and through all this trauma, and the Doors movie came out, Natural Born Killers came out, 
the grunge scene made a strong impact. Um, uh, Bill, Bill Clinton made a strong impact. The changes in what was going on at the time, I became connected to a force of energy that brought me uh, to the acoustic guitar. And I started writing on the acoustic guitar the way I write. And uh, that had nothing to do with Dead Reckoning. All of a sudden, Days of the News started developing itself, almost like I had no ownership over it, almost like it was an out-of-body experience. And uh, I started writing uh, from the acoustic guitar the first record, and uh, believe it or not, I tried to get people to understand it, and nobody would get it. I played coffee shop gigs by myself. I did many things. I tried to get the old band members interested in it. They made fun of me. Um, I mean, I got persecuted a lot, um, but it was normal. I was, I, you know, I, I got beat down a lot, you know, literally and emotionally for just being different. Um, but uh, it's, uh, I, I was invited to do a showcase for some people who had access to uh, um, the music industry. Okay. And there was like 20 acts. And I was one of the acts that was uh, that these scouts were ready to sign immediately as soon as they heard me. But I was afraid to do it by myself. But I was asked to do it by myself. But I asked the Dead Reckoning guys to do it with me. So we played like two heavy metal songs, and then I played Freak, which is off the first record, and I played this other song called The Character of the Threat. Which is not which you can't get uh, unless you get the uh, live um, VHS version, which is uh, discontinued. You can't buy in stores. You could probably get it online on eBay or something. But the story is, is I had to drag along my band uh, to uh, participate. I had to crack the whip. I had to drag along everybody this direction. And once it came to a point when people connected and we were, you know, two million records, you know, it got to the point where the band that I dragged along and the people that I tried to get involved, you know, it was like, you know, dude, you know, they were like, dude, we can't take it no more. You're making all the money. You write everything. You do all the work. We're just hired hands, you know. Um, but everybody in the world thinks we're, we're gods, you know? Yeah. Travis, real quick, I have uh, one other uh, question for you. Um, was it hard, like, going back down, you know, going down your, your darker path of your life and stuff like that, was it hard uh, for you to combat your drug addiction when, uh, you know, was it hard to, you know, stay clean for all those uh, months and years and stuff like that? That is a difficult question to answer. I, I, all I can say is, is I got up one day and I got clean, and I stayed clean for two years. Uh, and then I uh, was reevaluated by a, uh, a moment of abandonment with uh, my mother, which I don't, which I have a good relationship with today. But she, uh, she didn't raise me. I was uh, abandoned at two. I don't want any empathy for it. It's just this, this is my story. Um, she left me at two with uh, my father's grandmother, which my father was an alcoholic. He was also a rock and roll singer, um, um, but. Uh, I was staying with her at the time but, uh, because we were playing East Coast dates, and uh, I went out and I tried to uh, use amphetamines again, and I quickly discovered that it scared uh, the piss out of me and I ended up on a three-day run going to the uh, emergency room three days in a row and, uh, you know, like calling 911, going to the emergency room, just scared to death. I couldn't get high. And that was seven months ago. I tried to get high due to the pain of, like, you know, and uh, I couldn't get high. And that, that, that lesson that I learned was amazing. And uh, here's something else that's ironic. My clean date is now 9-11. Oh, wow. That's great. That's great, man. That's great. No. The irony. Um, I do suffer from panic disorder and panic attacks. Um, I... Uh, I'm dealing with uh, therapy and other things right now. I have these moments where uh, this fight or flight kicks in, and I actually think that I'm dying. And uh, that's some of the pain that I'm going through right now. 
and I'm investing that into my music. Um, I don't I don't know where it comes from. It's a lot of it has to do with the pressures of society, but I really hyperventilate and almost pass out, and I end up in emergency rooms. And uh, I'm dealing with that right now, but I'm not getting high over it. I, that's the last thing I'm going to do is to put a, you know, something that's going to speed my heart up and make me think I'm going to die even more than I already think I am. But that's what's going on in my life now. I'm going through some spiritual changes, and I've made up my mind that if uh, I can't, and if the force of nature does not allow or does not reckon with me to allow me to express myself uh, artistically in the world, then I'll just join a monastery and uh, give myself, you know, to uh, the force, uh, full force. I mean, my hope and dream has always been to give to you what's inside of me, this perspective that you don't see, that no one else sees, that only I can see. That's what makes me me and you you. Um, but if I can't accomplish that and, and if I receive some message in the universe, then I would choose to join a monastery and give my soul to the, uh, to the universe that way. Hey, Travis, um, Tantric has gone on to make a pretty good name for themselves, you know, within the past 10, 7 years or so. Do you have any uh, grudge or ill will against those guys whatsoever or any contact with them? Actually, I talked to Jesse Vest, who is the prior bass player, who I consider uh, the threshold of Tantric, um, he no longer will play music. He, he won't get in the music industry no more. We actually tried to get back together and uh, jam again, but they uh, they didn't ever grow artistically. They just uh, kind of stayed in this, uh, I don't know, they kind of stayed like a rock format band who never, like, they, they never grew spiritually within their art. And uh, we we just I was I felt like I was 80 years old and they were 16, um, so we tried to do it again, uh, but no, nothing was ever there. Nothing was ever there in the first place. That's what I'm trying to tell you is is right. that um, I have no ill will towards Tantric um, because my bio that I've released tells the true story. Um, they have full respect for me today because. They realized that the music that I made and everything that I did, I earned because they got to experience their own success. You know, it's almost like they stole from me, and they know that. They they lied and said that I fired them, and they used that to to build their success. Um, and they highly respect me today, and uh, because of the abuse they experienced from Hugo Fiera, who has. No talent at all. The only talent he has is being a car salesman. Wow. And, uh, but he's about sold out, you know. He's about worn people out, you know. Um, hey, Travis, let me ask you this. What I've come to understand, I mean, that's what I hear, but, you know, that's just what I hear. Sure. Um, from, the, you know, Todd Whitener, I just talked to him the other day. I'm trying to get his band to open up for me this uh, summer. Todd Whitener, the old guitar player from Tantric and Days of the New, um, which uh, did not write anything for Days of the New. He just, uh, I taught him how to play the acoustic guitar. He was a hired hand. Yeah. Now, tra uh, Travis, let me ask you this real quick, though. As uh, you were uh, uh, on the A&E hit show on Intervention, though, I mean, was it, was it hard to put your life out there like an open book for everybody to see, or uh, how was that? That was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. No. But I tell you what, I would not be alive if it wasn't for that. And I don't, I'm not talking about the treatment center. You know, I've been the I've been in the system my whole life. I can't tell you how many how much thorazine has been pumped through my blood. I cannot tell you how much lithium and Prozac I've taken. How many times I've been to you know treatment centers and this and that. The fact that I Expose myself in front of 100 million people gave me the liberty to not care what you think or what anybody thinks in this world. That I am myself and I will continue to be me and I will continue to express myself no matter what anyone thinks. And if you don't like it, then you can express your opinion 
and I don't, I don't have to like your opinion either. But I will express myself regardless, and it has gave, given me the liberty and the humility to be who I am. That is the person you're talking to on the phone. That's awesome, Travis. Let me ask you this last question here that I got for you. Uh, what was one of the craziest times on, you know, on stage? Like, uh, you know, something crazy that happened, like some groupie or something. You know, what was one of the craziest times uh, doing a performance? Oh, man. Uh, you know, there's so many misunderstandings. I was so misunderstood. Everything was crazy. I mean, uh, in Wisconsin, I was live on radio in front of 10,000 people and, uh, um, this dude was like yelling tantric and it, I was really, uh, I was an open wound at that time and I was really hurt by how the media was, you know, trying to, uh, point, you know, fingers at me. But what comes around goes around. My career is doing really good today. I'm getting paid really good. My art's coming along and, um, I can't, I couldn't ask for any more. My career is better today than it was yesterday. I wouldn't trade my career today for two million records yesterday any day. But I will tell you this. Um, I jumped off the stage and threatened to fight the guy. I said, tell, tell everybody in the crowd um, what you just said. You know, and uh, he said, tantric. And I, and I, gave, I jumped off the stage and I, I put the mic in front of his face and he yelled it. And he about got he about got killed by other fans, um, but I cussed and stuff, and it was on live radio in Milwaukee, and uh, it, that's just one of the things I did, you know. I mean, of many times. I mean, I have uh, walked off stage, busted guitars. I mean, I've just been a raging. Act. But let me tell you something, all you heavy metal fans out there, you know, if you're gonna sing heavy metal and you're gonna sing about anger. Be angry! Don't fake it! If you're gonna be angry, then bite something! Don't get out there and just play a bunch of bull crap! This is anger! Do you understand what I'm saying? The heavy metal stuff, that's just a bunch of bull crap! I'm a heavy metal fan, I love Slayer! I love Slayer, I love Tom Mariah! He says it how it is. My religion of torture. He knows what's going on, this hypocrisy, you know? I mean, there's people out there who are spreading the message that I know anger. And all this heavy metal bull crap, they don't know anger. This is anger. And this is anger controlled. I got a question for you, Travis. Um, you alluded to the Doors a couple times since we've been talking to you. And back in 2000, you actually got to work with the Doors and uh, do a couple songs on Stone Immaculate. Uh, what was that experience like for you? That was a uh, actually a revelation. The song, The End, when I was 11 years old, was the song that gave birth to my soul. Um, I said many times, uh, hundreds of times with that song, crying, understanding everything that Jim Morrison was singing about. And uh, I understood his pain and I understood what he was talking about. And... Uh, that's the song that gave birth to me. That is the song that made me want to come out here and play music and, and give back. Because, and give it, the, the fact that I was given an opportunity is like a, a message from God. You don't even understand. The end is, is what made me. The end is what made Days of the New. The end is what made Travis Meeks. The song "The End" is by far the the epic of my life, and I got the opportunity and the honor to perform that with the Doors live and record that with the Doors. I can do it much better today because my voice is much more growlier and hey yeah. But you know, I was uh, 20 years old when I got to do it then. But um, but. Uh, uh, it was the, one of the most amazing, magical things ever. And uh, I tell you what, those guys are magical. They're still in touch. They're still in tune. There's not musicians like that no more. Musicians like that are dying. But, uh, you know, um, Robbie Krieger is amazing. Ray Manzarek. Oh, my God, those guys are so beautiful. They're so beautiful.
beautiful. I cannot tell you how beautiful they are. They're real. They're real people. Real people still exist. I mean, real people who are connected, who don't, who don't shut themselves off because they're afraid of sexuality and shame or what other people think about them, you know, or, you know, oh, i got to go to school and conform or this or that or da-da-da-da-da, you know. Th these people are themselves. The right. doors are the doors. They're real people. Travis, I have a question from our. Ch I had a question from our chat room. Really, really quick though, um, they want to know your political views on like Obama and Clinton and all those guys. I mean, do you have any uh, political views about uh, the two candidates that are running right now? Well, it looks like Hillary's getting. Uh, uh, um, looks like Hillary's getting pushed back a little bit. Uh, you know, just I think Pete. I think the, uh, it looks like people are, it looks like people in uh, the uh, Negro race, uh, the black race, are, are really participating. And, and uh, it looks like that the, uh, we, we're, America's really wanting some change. Now, what I've seen in Obama and what I've watched in Obama, he has an attitude. I mean, he, he he's more angrier than Hillary. I will say that. You know, when I watch the debates, he he's got. I, I can see it in his eyes. You know, he has some passion. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, that guy might get it. He might get it. But I will tell you this: if a black man does get presidency in this country, there will be extreme change because there is a lot of racial people that I know that you know that. We'll, we'll say, um, you know, uh, racial s statements just like they're, like, you know, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to avoid, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of racism. And uh, I think that it's going to cause a lot of change. If a black man gets president in this country, it will cause extreme change. If a woman gets Presidency in this country, it will cause extreme change. I think it might cause a little bit of, uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Chauvinist, uh, yes. what is it, uh, between man and woman? What's Chauvinistic it? pig. Sure. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here, Travis. Um, might make some, you know, men a little jealous, but I think, uh, I could imagine, uh, you know, uh, a population of the white race uh, being, uh, scared and, uh, uh, intimidated because we, you know, for the past 200 years, it's been, we've had white presidents, white male presidents. And this is a change. And I know it's like a small thing. So what? It's the color of the skin. But, you know, little things like that, we make, uh, we make mountains out of molehills. And, Little things like that will cause change. I mean, we're already having food riots right now. There's a lot of stuff going on, our, going on in our country. I'm ready for it. Bring it on. Black president, woman president, I don't care if it's... I, bring it on. I'm ready for some change. I'm ready for whatever happens. I'm prepared. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know it's happening because I can feel it. I can feel it happening, and I've been feeling it happening. You can call me delusional. I don't know. what You, you can call me whatever you like. Like Eminem said, I am what you say I am. You know, I'm a dick. I'm an asshole. You know, I'm whatever you want to. I'm, I'm everything, but I'm also a nice guy. I'm also expressive. I'm honest. I'm giving. And, uh, you know, I'm a lot of things. But, uh, you know, uh Travis. I am ready Travis. for some change Tra because uh, the world is just, I can feel it right yeah. now. It's just, uh, you know, just what's going on right now. And, uh, and I'm just ready. I'm so ready. Tra I can't wait. Tra I can't wait till in November. Uh, that's about the time my re record's going to be released is about the time we uh, elect that president, which is ironic. Right. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to something different because I'm tired of the way things are going. I'm tired of turning on the television once a week, hearing about a kid, 
you know, actually, I don't know if I'm tired of it. It's just once a week is a statistic of a hostage or a shooting situation in a school. That's the statistics now. That's the statistics. People are tired of conformity. We need change. We want change. We want something different. Well, we try, want to try feel. To... We do not want to be suppressed no more. Right. Hey, Travis, and now out of all those uh, candidates, you got McCain, you got uh, Obama and, and Clinton. Uh, which one are you going to go for, if, uh, if I can ask? That I will not express. That I will keep in anim anonymity. Can I ask why, though? I mean, uh, I mean I'm mean, i going for uh, Hillary Clinton. I'd like to see uh, Hillary get in there. Um, again, I would, uh, that I, w I will not express. Okay. All right, well, that's cool. I mean, you, we have uh, a couple more questions for you, and uh, go ahead, Augie. What do you got? Uh, one last thing for me. Uh, I was just wondering, I think it, when uh, Velvet Revolver was looking for a singer, they came to you or something like that, and, uh, or did you go to them? What happened with that situation? Well, they hired me over the phone, and I said, look, I'm not the guy for the gig. They said, but your voice is so amazing. They sent me these tracks, right? I sing over them in the studio. You know, and, uh, you know, I'm using my high register and I'm using my low register, you know, and I had the capacity and similarities of, uh, range and attitude like Axel. Um, but, uh, and they really dug that. Um, but, uh, um, when they met me in person, I weighed 90 pounds, uh, I was bald, my, uh, body was completely shaved. Um, and uh, I was with a uh, authentic Israeli Jew who was an engineer at my studio, Damn. and uh, uh, they took one look at me and fired me. You know, at that point, we ended up doing the audition. But I knew when, once they seen me, because they're all like, you know, uh, you know, uh, let's see, I'm five eight. They're all like, uh, you know, um, uh, six. Five and six three. They're all really tall, and I'm five eight. They took one look at me, and uh, I knew that. You know, I told them that I wasn't the guy. You know, but you know, they said, "No, you're the guy." And uh, I canceled the I canceled the plane ticket. And they said, "Why didn't you come?" I said, "Dude, because I know in my heart I'm not the guy." You know, I, I just I'm not a rock star. You you guys are rock. I'm, I'm an artist. I'm, it's different. This is personal. You know, you are. are, are you're actors, you know. I'm a writer. You're actors. You go act. Go find another actor, yeah. you know. And they did. They found a Scott Weiland, and then ended up firing him. Wow. But uh, anyways, uh, that's what happened. That's is awesome. I went ahead. They said, "Come on, you're the guy. We know you're the guy." Da 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 da. -da, -da. Feed me that L.A. bullcrap. Yeah. So I flew out there, and then they took one look at me, and I could just tell. And it was just like I knew that, you know. I was like, I told you. Told you they took one look at me, which you know, whatever you know, um, which I didn't want the gig anyways. That's not my forte. I don't like Slash's guitar playing. It makes uh -huh. me ill. But uh, the, uh, what I loved about Guns N' Roses is I get up around seven, get out of bed around nine, but I don't worry about nothing no, because I'm worried to waste of my time. That's what I liked about Guns N' Roses. That's I like that awesome. attitude. Mr. Brown's I wasn't into Usual Illusion 1 and 2, man. Yeah. I liked Lies, 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 and Appetite. I just wasn't really into Usual Illusion 1 and 2. I think he lost his attitude. I mean, I just, I don't know. Maybe getting a ring, he had it a little bit, but yeah. I don't know. I just, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm just not, I don't know. I'm not into Guns N' Roses. I'm not into them. That's I'm, I'm into world music. I'm into soundtracks. I, I told you I'm into Dick and yeah. Dance. I'm into the right. music that created music. Yeah, I'm into Kotos. I'm into Japanese music. I'm into Celtic music. I'm into Aborigine music. You know, uh, in the Middle Eastern music, all forms of Middle Eastern music, classical music. Um, and you know, I do love I do love metal, but uh, I will say that Slayer has the throne. Slayer are the kings. They have outlasted everybody, yep. and they have upheld their integrity. Definitely. And their sound has gotten better, and their songs have gotten better. Oh, the new ones! The new one is the I think one of the best ones they've ever put out. They definitely oh, bring it yeah. together. The cult, man. That that oh, record. Oh my God! Badass. The sound of that record. Oh, it's so just full. Blows me away, man. 
I'm just like, oh, I feel it. And uh, they're like 50 years old. Yep. And yeah. <laughs> they're still throwing it down out there, still doing the rain and blood and doing all the good stuff. That's awesome. I love those guys, man. They have my full respect and all, and with all my heart. Yeah. I mean, even if like one was an asshole to me, I don't care. Yeah. I still have respect to man. Uh -huh. I love those guys. Like I met Dave Mustaine. He was. He, people always told me he was an asshole. He was actually cool to me. Yeah. And everybody that I've ever met who's met Dave Mustaine, the day I met Dave Mustaine, I, I knocked on his bus door. And I said I wanted to meet him. I was in Daisy. I come in and we talked for a little bit, and he was really nice to me. Mm -hmm. Just another guy in pain, man. That's awesome. As artists, we, we, you know, we do feel pain. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I think Mustaine's the real deal. I think you know uh, he's had to try to uphold some kind of like uh, I don't know. I think he's gotten lost in trying to figure out what he's going to do artistically, just like Axl Rose, and he's kind of become a classic band. I will not and refuse to become a classic band. I will not become a classic band. I will continue to grow and break my mold for all costs. That's awesome, Travis. I don't care if I end up in a mental institution <laughs> at all costs. I will not end up being called a classic rock grunge band. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing now is far from Tool and System of the Down. It's organic instruments with dulcimers and choir and la da 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 my personality is just, I mean, you can hear it in my voice. I'm very expressive. Mm -hmm. As to where years ago, I was really scared to do interviews. But I just, I mean, you get to the point where you get beaten up so much. Okay. It's like, shoot me again, I ain't dead yet. There you go, Metallica's new record. Come on, shoot me again, I ain't dead yet. <laughs> I love that record. I don't care what people say about the snare. I love that record. So, you know. That's awesome. Travis. You can count me in on that one. Travis. His lyrics, his yeah. attitude, you know. I am a St. Anger fan because I love old Metallica, and I know that James Hetfield was trying to get clean during that time, and I understand his lyrics. I think you're one of the and few fans of that, that record, one. you know. I want to. Uh, anyways. Yeah, that's awesome. Though. Travis, man, it's been great having you on the show, man. And uh, if they want to get, get a hold of you, how would they get a hold of you, Travis? You know, what's your websites and all that? Um, we have myspace.com forward slash days of the new. We have myspace.com forward slash tree colors, T R E E C O L O R S. And we have myspace.com forward slash Travis Meeker, M E E K E R. And then we have days of the new.com which will soon be down for a little bit because we're getting ready to uh, reformat it into an, a new uh, server, and it's going to be in 3D. Oh, that's going to be awesome. I got, I got, it will be awesome. I got one, one thing real quick. I just want to compliment you um, for, for keeping true to your spirit and keeping true to your music because it's very seldom you ever find any musicians that are doing that, especially these days. And I just want to compliment you on that. Well, I appreciate that, and I know that you mean that, or you, or you wouldn't say it. That's definitely true. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, Travis, it's been great, man. We'll, we'll uh, get a hold of you sometime in the future and uh, have you back on the show. Like I said, love you much, man. It's right. been great. All right, thank you, Travis. Bye. All right, there we go. There's Travis Meeks. You didn't get a promo ID. You're listening to the best of Uncensored Net Noise on MorningShowCentral.com. <laughs> Uncensored Net Noise, you're on the air live. What's up? Hey. Tell Dom to do that song again. That shit was fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, the Travis Meek song? The Travis yeah, Meek song. Grab the guitar and do the whole song. Do it over again? Yeah. And grab the guitar, Dom. Do it right here when uh, Chewie's on the, the line. Sorry about the let me go. I won't let it show. Won't you touch me, touch me? I won't let it show, but I'm fine. 